Hello students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry option. Uh, we've got just a couple of videos left to go in, the, in this particular option and they will be focusing on the Solvay process. In this particular video, we're just going to look at some of the environmental implications of the Solvay process. There are three main areas that uh, you should talk about when you're evaluating the Solvay process and its potential environmental impacts. And they are uh, pollutants, both uh, for water, aquatic systems, and also the atmosphere. The disposal of waste, so specifically that's the calcium chloride, but also any other um, waste materials which may escape from the reactant vessels. And mining, and of course the mining is specifically going to relate to the limestone, <coughs> which is what's shown here, uh, or uh, the calcium carbonate specifically, which is what we're after. So firstly, let's look at pollutants. Um, the Solvay process is an exothermic process. That means it has a delta H value, which is negative. And because it's got a negative delta H value, it releases heat. Now this, um, you'll, you'll remember from the flowchart in the previous video that uh, there are a number of different stages to the Solvay process, a, a couple of different processes or, or um, uh, chemical reactions that are part of this process. And so it's very important that we look at each of those processes and how, um, <clears throat> how each of them is going to uh, impact on the environment. But one of the things that we're aware of is that the thermal um, pollution that can be generated uh, can significantly affect aquatic organisms. Most living things have a range of temperatures which are optimum, and if the temperature becomes too high, then <clears throat> their, uh, their bodies don't function as well, and of course they can, uh, they can be killed. So it's very important that we think about um, these sorts of factors uh, in a Solvay plant in order to ensure that we're not just releasing all that heat either straight into the atmosphere or into our uh, aquatic ecosystems. One alternative, which is a little bit on the costly side, are cooling ponds. These are basically um, little bodies of water located close to the Solvay plant and from which um, water and other wastes that can come directly from the plant itself into these cooling ponds, they uh, there the temperature can be allowed to drop before maybe later um, having that water entering the, the, the local um, waterways. Another potential pollutant is ammonia and ammonia is a pollutant because it's a respiratory irritant but it also has a very very distinctive and strong smell. <clears throat> now most of the ammonia is recycled but of course some of it may well escape into the atmosphere so uh, monitoring needs to occur around a Solvay plant to make sure that the levels of ammonia that are being released are not too high and that are within the safe limits. <clears throat> the second area that we need to review is waste disposal. Um, the primary waste product is calcium chloride and we've kind of talked about that before. Um, in small quantities calcium chloride um, can be disposed of either through burial or through release into waterways. <clears throat> but in larger quantities, uh, it's not so good. So, uh, and in the quantities that are being um, produced in the Solvay process, uh, they can't just be thrown out into the environment. There has to be something specifically done in order to uh, keep them um, from having a big impact in the environment. In cold climates, um, street or path ice, when the uh, roads get iced up, you can use the uh, calcium chloride to um, help um, improve that situation. But in Australia, that's not usually an issue for us. Um, so, um, so calcium chloride is not really a, a, a very useful product. Um, and so as a result, most or, or the only um, Solvay plant that was located, it has subsequently shut down, which was in Adelaide. Um, but the only one that we had was located very close to the ocean so that the calcium chloride could be released into the seawater and that would just neutralize um, because it's such a huge body of water that additional amount of uh, salt wasn't going to make a significant impact. If the Solvay plant's not located close to the ocean then, you, then um, the calcium chloride can still be buried 
but it's important that um, the um, waste is contained so that the ions do not leach out into the um, surrounding environment. And of course, one of the problems with this is that the calcium ion is a contributor to um, hard water. So we really don't want that leaking out um, and contaminating the local water supplies. The final uh, area is mining. Um, we have to get um, the calcium carbonate, which is one of our raw materials, and that comes primarily from limestone, and most limestone is mined. Um, and some solvay plants are actually located close to a limestone deposit in order to um, facilitate that uh, collection process. The brine, which is primarily the sodium chloride component that we need, um, may uh, be sourced from the ocean, but it can also uh, be um, sourced from halite or a uh, mineral, which also needs to be mined. These um, materials may be uh, underground and therefore either the um, surface needs to be opened or, or drilling uh, needs to occur for underground uh, mining operations and those have associated costs but they also have associated impacts on the environment. Most countries now have regulations that limit the damage of mining to the environment and require companies to actually um, repair as much of the damage as they possibly can once the mines have been um, uh, fully, once, once the deposits have been fully mined. Some alternate methods of sodium carbonate production um, can also include purification of minerals that contain sodium carbonate. So basically trying to purify, increase the percentage of sodium carbonate in order to try and, and produce a, a more pure um, result. Each of these areas has the potential to have an impact on the environment and should be part of any of your discussions around uh, the Solvay uh, process. More specifically, we're going to be looking at the issues um, that affect the location of particular industrial sites. And we're going to use a survey plan as a specific um, case study to do that. Um, but that will come up just a little bit later at the conclusion of this particular topic. Thanks for watching.